trading card games provide their players with multiple ways to purchase their product. Booster packs, booster boxes, and starter decks are all fairly common methods for acquiring cards. But Yu-Gi-Oh! is different. Konami has experimented with many different marketing mediums such as Shonen Jump magazines, McDonald's Happy Meal promotional cards, and the most notable being video game inclusions. Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel was released on April 15th, 2003. While most video game promo cards are often overlooked, Worldwide Edition was very different. Not only did this product contain Sinister Serpent, an endlessly recurring monster that would help mitigate the drawback of discards, but it also contained Harpy's Feather Duster, a one-sided heavy storm that would only destroy opposing spells and traps. Shortly after Worldwide Edition's release, a new ban list came into effect on May 8th, 2003, only a month after the previous list. Sinister Serpent, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Heavy Storm were all now limited to one copy each, and Graceful Charity became semi-limited from three copies down to two. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, here we are again, and... <sighs> that is rancid. I didn't get a chance to wash it since the last time we filmed, so this is about a seven-day-old stink on this shirt. It has not aged well. Now, did I throw the last episode by playing Exodia instead of something competent? Yes. Would I do it again? Also, yes, I would. I am not sorry for showing Simo the power of the Forbidden One, even if it was only for one out of our three games. But today, I came to win. Now, in order to do so, we're going to have to roll Beatdown or Control, because Burn Mill is functionally unplayable. The separation between Beatdown and Control is probably about three cards. Lists are functionally set in stone at this point. The only thing that's changed since last set is the inclusion of Harpy's Feather Duster and Sinister Serpent. This will make the ceiling on stuff like Graceful Charity higher, but those cards will be harder to find because they are semi-limited. Really, I'm just hoping to be able to play something that allows me to... Stress my superior Yugist intellect over the foolish Simo. Let's give it eight or nine clicks here so it goes as fast as possible. Anything but burn mill is what I'm looking for. No way. No, 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 no! Uh-oh. You know what the best part of being the anime protagonist is of this series? I can play like absolute garbage and Joseph is still going to lose. But we're back again in the winner's circle, ladies and gentlemen. Feels good on that two win streak. 100% undeserved, by the way. I should have totally lost and actually played better. But we're in the winner's circle. Never lucky for Joseph. And uh, we're going to be back spinning the wheel once again. Legacy of Darkness is the episode following this where we're going to have some maybe new changes to the wheel, hopefully, because we do get a lot of new new cards introduced to the card pool, and they do start to change things up quite a bit. I get my two spins, so if I don't like my first one, I can potentially re-spin here. So let's go ahead and see what we can get. We're hoping for either beatdown or control. I kind of want beatdown, to be honest, and, uh, ooh, oh, oh. Uh, I mean, it would be funny. It would be really funny. It would be really funny. I don't like this because Harpy's Feather Duster is in the format. We did lose a Heavy Storm, but Feather Duster is basically better Heavy Storm, so it's an adequate replacement. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try to go for Beatdown here. Like I said, I, I played Control in the last episode, and the format hasn't shifted a ton, so I'm really just hoping that that's the case. Yes, okay. Just to give you guys a little bit of variety, we're gonna be bringing the Beatdown. So this is probably the best Burn is going to get in this format, which is saying very little. It looks suspiciously like a good stuff deck, and that's because it is. There's just not too much we can be playing. I don't want to go in on Princess of Sergi if I don't have to. Realistically, we're aiming to control the board state, Raigeki our opponent's monsters, get in with Gemini Elf a couple of times, and close out with either a Cannon Soldier and a Scapegoat, or a Just Desserts, which is much better when our opponent has just activated Scapegoat. I think, realistically, this could win with or without Cannon Soldier. But here's hoping. Here's what we're playing. 
Three Cannon Soldier, which you can tribute one monster to inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Now, importantly, scapegoats say they can't be tributed for a tribute summon, but you can tribute them for the activation cost of Cannon Soldier's effect. Jinzo afterwards, followed by Three Magician of Faith. Morphing Jar is fantastic for us. We run through our entire hand very quickly. Mystic Tomato, one copy of Sangan, one Sinister Serpent, a Witch of the Black Forest, and three Gemini Elf, my favorite beater. For spells, we're on Change of Heart, which is game-winning in this matchup. A Dark Hole, a Delinquent Duo, Double Graceful Charity, One Feather Duster, Heavy Storm, Reborn, Painful Choice, Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Raigeki, Scapegoat, 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 Snatch Steel, Call of the Haunted, Cease Fire, which is limited, Imperial Order, Triple Just Desserts, Magic Cylinder, and Mirror Force. In the side, we've got Bazoo, should we need more beaters, Confiscation, and the Forceful Sentry when we are going first, a copy of Prohibition alongside a copy of Swords of Revealing Light, Two Dust Tornado to kill opposing Imperial Orders, Triple Solemn Judgment, for what have you, and Triple Torrential Tribute. Here's hoping, but I'm not particularly confident. So like I said, I wanted to play something a little bit different, just so we get a bit of variety. I'm not sure what Joseph spun on his wheel, but I played Control last time. I think you guys got the gist of how that works. Now we're going to be bringing the beat down. So this list is actually inspired by one of the 2003 World Champion lists, and to be fair, that list is a little bit different because it does incorporate a couple cards from Legacy of Darkness and Pharaonic Guardian, but for the most part, it looks very similar to this. I just made a few changes, and for a beat down list during this time, I actually really like this a lot. So I decided to take inspiration from that. Let's go ahead and do the card by card. So first up, two copies of Bazoo the Soul Eater. The reason this is in here is because this card can actually get very large. It can hit over something like a Jinzo, which we're actually not main decking, but we'll talk about that later. Bazoo is just incredible being able to do that. It also can hit over basically any beater in the game just by banishing one or two monsters from your graveyard. We don't have many, but to be fair, there's only a couple ways we're gonna be able to revive those monsters anyway. So it's a good way to just get some extra value out of some monsters that are already in the graveyard. One Cyber Jar, we are on beatdown now, so because of that, I wanna be just being able to summon as many monsters as possible. This on the initiative is crazy because then you get to use all the power cards first. And again, if we can just swarm our field with monsters, we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Also helps clear out Scapegoat as well. Next up, we have three Goblin Attack Force. This one's a bit iffy because Scapegoat is in the format. However, Goblin Attack Force is the biggest beater and we're just trying to hit for as much damage as humanly possible. So that's why we are playing three. One Magician, of faith we could be playing more of this and frankly we probably should be but again we're on beatdown we want to be as aggressive as possible and so i want to have a little bit of recovery for some of the powerful spells that we're playing but setting monsters and setting ourselves back in terms of tempo is not what we want to be doing one sangen one sinister serpent one witch of the black forest sinister serpent is solely in here just because we can cycle it with graceful charity and is a free discard at the very least it's also just a way for us to you know not die in a lot of instances it also can bait a lot of stuff like nobleman of crossout and the like too even stuff like dark Hole and Regeki gets a little bit worse with Serpent in the format because if you lead Serpent set, they might just waste a Dark Hole or Regeki on it, especially if you led with something like a Graceful Charity or a Pot of Greed. Thinking it's a Magician of Faith, they'll hit the Serpent and they just minus one on one of their powerful board wipes. So it's a nice card all around. Three Gemini Elf, three Mechanical Chaser. These are the six beaters that have zero drawback. That's why we're on them. And then of course the Goblin Attack Force are just the bigger ones that do have a slight drawback. It's really weird. Like stuff like Dark Elf and Dry Gumo just get infinitely worse with Scape goat because you have to pay life points to hit into goats. Goblin Attack Force has the same downside because it has to stay in defense, which kind of sucks, but we have some ways to mitigate that and hopefully we'll get to see that come up. That's it for the monsters. For the spells, Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Two Graceful Charity, Newly Semi-Limited, still incredibly broken. That doesn't change anything. One Harpy's Feather Duster. We're actually maining the duster and siding the Heavy Storm. The reason for this is because we're playing nine trap cards and a lot of them are very important, so we'll talk about it a little bit later, but man, duster is going to be nuts and I really can't wait to see this card come in clutch. Monster Reborn, double MST, one Nobleman. Until I know what deck he's playing, I want to just play the one Nobleman, and then if he's on a control deck, I'll probably side in the second. Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Regeki, and Snatch Steel. For the trap cards, we have Call of the Haunted, Imperial Order, Magic Cylinder. I honestly just want a Magic Cylinder Joseph for game. I think that would be one of the funniest ways to close it out. In addition to that, it's also good because it does lower his life points, and that's what we're trying to do, just get in as much damage as possible. Some of these games have been incredible incredibly close and a magic cylinder on a small attack could make the difference. I really just want to see Joseph's face when we magic cylinder him. Moving on along though, we have two copies of magic drain. This is essentially like Imperial order light. So the reason we're playing this along with three solemn judgment, again, aggression is the name of the game. My plan here is to play three magic drain, I guess two magic drain in one order, plus the judgment. These are the cards that are going to nullify scapegoat. Joseph is highly insulated with scapegoat and pretty much 
much any instance where I might want to kill him, he just thinks that he's safe behind Scapegoat. However, if we can save Judgment or Magic Drain or Order for Scapegoat specifically, we might be able to get a bunch of monsters on the field. Joseph will think, oh, I'm fine. He can't hit through my Scapegoat. We flip one of these and it is just game over because he will not be able to shield from this assault. That's the game plan. These also are just nice because they stop some of the best cards in the game, frankly. We saw Joseph use this in the last episode. We've seen a lot of Judgment overall. So I think this is a really cool way to build this into an aggro deck. Moving on to the side deck, we got Jinzo in the side. I mean, Jinzo is just a format defining card, but we are playing a lot of trap cards and it's kind of one of those situations where if we summon Jinzo, we shut off all of the cards to stop him from summoning Scapegoat. And so if that's our game plan, I actually don't want to play this card in the main. I think depending on the matchup, if I need to be a little bit more controlling, that's where Jinzo will come in. Two Fissure in case he's on an aggressive deck of his own. The Heavy Storm in case he's playing a ton of back row. Again, Heavy Storm's kind of weird because we're playing so much back row of our own. We don't really want to wipe it, but the card's still broken, so we want to have it somewhere. Third MST, just for the same reason. The second Nobleman, in case he's on a control strategy. Three copies of Scapegoat. This card was untouched by the ban list. No surprise, really. But the thing is, Scapegoat's just as format defining. You're playing an aggressive deck, though. Scapegoat isn't really aggressive. It helps you just not die, which is great. So if he's on an aggressive deck as well, and we're playing like an aggro mirror, then Scapegoat's going to come in and really be a clutch. One Swords for the same reason. Reason. Two Dust Tornado, again, more spell and trap removal so we don't lose to any random garbage he might be playing. The third Magic Drain for, you know, a similar reason. We might side this in when we know we're going first just to have maximum protection from spells. And then two Torrential Tribute, again, if he's on a more aggressive deck. I really think this is going to be fun, and I think it's going to show a very interesting side of both aggro and control if you've been keeping up with the series. And so it's neat to see before we get into Legacy of Darkness what people were playing for the better part of a month before the format shifted on the release of Legacy of Darkness. But that's going to do it. I'm 2-0. We're going to go for that 3 Pete, Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to duel. Joseph, Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas edition of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's either going to be live on Christmas or the day after. I haven't decided at the time of recording this, but, you know, format really hasn't changed too much. We have Feather Duster, we have Serpent, but Feather Duster pretty much just replaces Heavy Storm, if we're going to be honest, but that's perfectly okay. We might have a more representative matchup of the format, depending, of course, on what you got on the wheel. Yeah, happy Kwanzaa to you, too. I gotta tell you, <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm in the Hanukkah spirit, I would say because this shirt's wash was only supposed to last one day, and here I am, eight days later, still wearing it. <laughs> it is... Uh, it is really going to affect my gameplay, no lie. I can imagine. But let's go ahead and get into the game, though. But before we do, we have to shout out a patron over on Patreon, as always. And in the spirit of Christmas, let's have some fun. So big shouts to No Hat Boy 69 <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. And Joseph, are you ready? Was, who were the other 68 no hat boys? Jeez. I'm not sure. We'll have to uh, send him a message and ask later. Oh, oh we love to see it. And I'm going to ensure that I go first for one, but two, that I actually draw a card for turn. For everyone who doesn't know, I have this little card here that says to draw on turn one. It actually fell over because my ceiling fan knocked it over just from sheer wind force, I assume. But mm -hmm. we get to go ahead and draw that card. And I love to start a game off with confiscation, don't you? Man, I was really hoping you didn't have any hand attack. Yeah, uh, here you are. Oh my, okay, so, <sighs> Cannon Soldier Scapegoat. Are you playing like Cannon Soldier Beatdown? Is that where we're going with this? I mean, I'm I'm doing my best, buddy. Burn in this set is just about as bad as it gets, and oh. Cannon Soldier is, if nothing else, a decent card. That is true. That is very true. I think I'm going to go ahead and send that scapegoat away. I think that's probably the uh, thing I'm worried about the most that's in your hand. Cannon Soldier, right. Tomato, Ceasefire, and uh, Snatch Steel. Let's well, go ahead. that's a thousand damage for me. Feeling good already. You know, I just decided to do the job for you, and uh, I'll just go ahead and do a little setting here, and I'll pass the turnover. Oh, God, this is not good. All right, um, I'm going to start with a normal summoned Mystic Tomato. That is fine by me. All right, if it's Magician of Faith, it's Magician of Faith. Take another thousand if you like. It is not Magician of Faith, but it is another monster with 300 attack. 
It's Sinister Serpent, baby! Yo, the boy is here! <laughs> Big fan of Sinister Serpent. Huge fan of Sinister Serpent. I've been a Sinister Serpent fan since day one. Now, this is the pre-errata version of this card, correct? Correct, yes. So, it will be adding back to our hand during every one of our standby phases. No drawback. It is just going to be absolutely wonderful. Stupid and very upset that you are setting it and I am trying to punch in for damage. I will draw for turn. In my standby phase, I will go ahead and add that Sinister Serpent back to my hand. Feels if good. If that's how you want to spend your normal summon, go for it, buddy. I mean, looking at the rest of my hand, I might have to do that, to be honest. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see, though. Okay, so I know one of those cards is most likely Ceasefire. Uh, you did have Snatch Steel. Would you set Snatch Steel? I don't know about that. Interesting. Well, I mean, if... You have nothing else going on. I'm just gonna set and I'll pass to you. Go ahead, buddy. All right, I mean, it is what it is. I guess I'll normal summon a cannon soldier. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. fine. <laughs> Next, I'll tribute my entire board. It is once again the serpent. Mm, let's see if we can get in for 14. You can, you're doing damage in a burn deck. What a shocker. Getting closer, but not close enough. Now, I would really like it if you tributed off that tomato. Would you like to do that for me, Joseph? I'm good, dude. <laughs> okay. Standby phase. I'll go ahead and add back the Sinister Serpent after drawing for turn, of course. We'll go to main one. I'll, uh, hmm. Let's see. How do we want to do this? I feel like this is too tempting not to. We'll fire off a Harpy's Feather Duster. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. That is the end of the game. Let's see what you got. Oh, man. Okay. I am going to activate Ceasefire in response. Sure. So this will uh, deal me a thousand, I believe. That's true, but I, I think that's it. Oh, my God. Oh, The no. Just Desserts, too. What was the last one, then? Call of the Haunted. All right. All right. That's a... Talk about a talk about a sweeper. That's a good one. Uh, following I mean, that up with Dark Hole seems pretty good, don't you think? Uh, seems like the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know the last card in your hand is Snatch Steel, so I will go ahead and normal summon a copy of Mechanical Chaser, and we will hit in for 1850. Oh, you got beat down and you're still on Chaser? I am. Uh, for reasons that are yet to be revealed, I'll just go to main two, and I think with this, I might actually just have to pass the turn. Go ahead. All right. Um, hmm. Ugh. I guess I'll Snatch Steel here. Give me that bad boy. I really don't want to do this, and uh, this is going to be really bad. I'm going to Judgment that. Whoa. Hmm. And suddenly we have a game on our hands. One drawn copy of Just Desserts might turn this entire thing on its head. It's true. That's why I'm a little bit scared to do this, but uh, you know, my hand isn't exactly too accommodating for what's going on here. Well, it's I'll got draw. cards in it, which is different than mine. Yeah, I mean, that is always a nice thing. What could you have set? You're playing Burn, so you're... Magician of Faith is always good. That's always going to be right. there. Mystic Tomato is another one. Cannon Soldier. I don't know if you would set Cannon Soldier to not die here. I think Magician of Faith is probably, like, my biggest fear at this point. I'm going to fire off a change of heart. Let's go ahead and see what it is. Oh, jeez. What a pathetic change of heart. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. It's just oh, a Sinister Serpent. Oh, God. That's awful. Uh, well, we'll flip it up. I mean, I can at least get an extra 300 damage in at the very <laughs> least. I'll normal summon a copy of Bazoo the Soul Eater. Whoa. Ooh, and we will hit one. in for, I believe, 3750. All right, sounds good to me. I'm not super jazzed about it. I'll go to main phase two, and I think that will be the end of my turn, so I will give you back this serpent and go ahead. Uh, that's not good. Oh, man. Uh, this is really bad because now your serpent trades for my serpent. <laughs> I do have another card to make it worse, unfortunately. It is Graceful Charity. <laughs> That's very bad, yes. <laughs> it's even worse when you know I have Sinister Serpent in my hand, so I'll go ahead and discard that. Down he I, goes. I will also get rid of this redundant copy of Delinquent Duo at this point, considering you have zero cards in hand. Okay, in my graveyard, I only have the Sinister Serpent at this point, so I could banish that for Bazoo, but I don't really think I need to. Oh, I'd appreciate it. I'll go to the battle phase, try to hit with Bazoo. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll hit for 1850. You got it, buddy. All right, main two. I will set myself two cards face down and pass the turn. All right, uh, let me get this bad boy back. I hear he's pretty good. He's all right. I'm going to set him and one additional card before passing back to you. All right, I will draw. I shall go to the battle phase. Yep. I will attempt to attack with Bazoo. All right, uh, down goes Sinister Serpent. 
and we will attempt to attack for game. Uh, do you have the judgment? I do, in fact, have the judgment. Well, that's the way it goes, I suppose. Dang, Harpy's Feather Duster is a fun and fair card. Oh, I love it. Oh, man, you're uh. going to be seeing a lot more of it, too, because this card doesn't get banned until 2005. <laughs> awesome. What a great start to Yu-Gi-Oh. I can see why this uh, game has lasted as long as it has. Uh, let's see if you can last in this match against my painful choice. Here we go again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see what happens. I see we're going to send a bunch of graceful charities here. Yeah, yeah, we'll send some hand attack shit to and i think i want the pot of greed um do i send magician if you give me back magician no i'm sending the pot of greed all right so the options are double graceful pot of greed confiscation forceful forceful we kind of one for one kind of okay with that graceful graceful and burn is interesting because it allows you to dig deeper yes but i don't think the graveyard setup's nearly as good i'll give you forceful century i'll let you take a peek okay I will take the Forceful Sentry, and uh, before we take a peek, let's fire off a Delinquent Duo. <laughs> oh, all right, pick your card. All right, let me get this one right here. All right, well, unfortunately, that was my Imperial Order, so that was a good one. Whew. Unfortunately for you, I opened the Sinister Serpent. <laughs> I guess I should have led with Forceful Sentry. <laughs> Let's go for that next. Yeah, you'll get to see the rest, and uh, they're they're fine. I have a feeling I know what's going back. Yeah, none of these are super crazy. Um, wow, Goblin Attack Force is super middling this format. Yeah, it's a weird one. I actually took this list inspiration from uh, one of the 2003 World Championship lists, and he was on three Goblin Attack Force, which I thought in GOAT format, or a format with Scapegoat, excuse me, was very so weird. weird, yeah. All right, I'll take the Monster Reborn. That seems like the logical choice to me. I will shuffle that away. All right, uh, time to set some cards now that I know you don't have Feather Duster. I encourage you to draw it off the top. I would like to. That would be nice. Oh, that's not going to do it. All right, well, we are on beatdown. Let's just go ahead and summon this bazoo. Is that fine? Yeah, it's fine. Let's see if we can get into this. You idiot! You moron! <laughs> it's my Sinister Serpent! Uh, main phase two, I will go ahead and set a card. Um, I actually will add Sinister Serpent back to my hand because uh, we were supposed to do oh, that. Oh, so. will you? Yeah, and go ahead. All right, stand by. I'm getting my boy back. I was going to bat back anyway, even if it was like Magician of Faith that was set, because, you know, in case you, you know, wanted to duo me again, that would actually, you know, to a degree matter. But I think at that point you would just forceful century. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd be all right with it. I will dust tornado the one you just set. I, uh, okay. <laughs> I would have uh, liked to have kept that, sir. I'm okay with that. I mean, you could just have more Torrentials back there. So normal summon goblin attack force. Show me Torrential number Let's two. Let's go, baby. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, battle phase hidden. I will show you the mirror force. Oh, that's basically the same thing in this instance, but you get to keep your monster. So it's even better. I will pass. You're going to take that 300 and you're going to like it. Yep. Oh God. Okay. Um, let's flip some in this sinister serpent. I'm going to summon <laughs> a Gemini elf as well. And, uh, let's get the 300 beats going. It's, what kind of burn deck is playing Gemini elf, Joseph? <laughs> Gemini elf is the best burn card. It, it hits for 19. I mean, that's, that's damage, baby. It is damage. Uh, oh, this is a bit awkward. I'll normal summon. I'm in a Gemini Alpha my own. Yeah, that is awkward. Uh, I'll attack into Sinister Serpent. I guess I'll take 16 here, sure. All right, you're gonna get it back, which is why I'm not too happy about it, but I'll pass the turn. Give me the boy. Yes! Okay, this is actually just insane. I didn't really conceive of how powerful this was until I saw it in action. I basically just get to fog your first attack. I make you commit to stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Think about all the games where it's come down to us just trying to draw a monster to not die. Sinister Serpent just blanks that every single time. Right. I will go ahead and normal summon a goblin attack force. Woof, all right. Uh, attempt to go to battle, swing over Gemini Elf. I will take my 300 gladly. Okay. 400. And then uh, we'll attack into what I presume to be a Sinister Serpent. Actually, it's much worse. Oh, uh, yeah, that's bad. It's very, very bad. That's All right, very to bad. To the hand goes Graceful Charity. And to defense goes Goblin Attack Force at the end of the battle phase. I will go to main two. Oh, boy, that's pretty bad. I suppose I will just pass the turn. All right, I will draw. Oh, my God. Okay, so Charity first. Of course. Wow, the, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Oh my god. The fact oh. that Sinister Serpent just turns Graceful Charity into a plus one, too, is absurd. Uh, oh I, boy. Oh boy. Oh I do not god. like where this is going. <laughs> okay, so here's step one. Okay, and then show me the monster reborn. 
Yeah, pretty much. Uh, same thing. All right. Out comes the friend. Yep. And we'll set this guy as well. Let's go to combat, and if you've got evenly matched, go for it. You mean you didn't want to attack me with Sinister Serpent either? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Jinzo's kind of a problem. I will activate Monster Reborn, target Bazoo the Soul Eater. Ah, yeah. So this is kind of a problem. Bazoo can actually get very slightly higher than Jinzo. Just barely. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we will bring him back. Mm -hmm. I will activate the effect of Bazoo, banish all three monsters in the grave to make him 2,500, and I will do this mm -hmm. so we know that that's the case. Uh, attempt to go to battle phase and hit in. Oh, you did it. You outed Jinzo. All right, success. <laughs> did you know, actually, Bazoo's first printing said banish three cards, not three oh, monsters? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it was a mistranslation, but uh, it was kind of a funny thing that was uh, that happened back in the day. So people were banishing, like, all of their, like, traps in the grave because, like, no one was ever using those unless you played, like, Mask of Darkness. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to get my Sinister Serpent back. Of course. We're going to fire off a Harpy's Feather Duster because I'm pretty sure that's a Solemn Judgment. It is not. It is actually a Magic Drain, which I will activate. Would you like to discard a spell to negate Harpy's Feather Duster? <laughs> Ooh, I I'm thinking about it, but in fact, <laughs> I think I'm good. Okay, okay. <laughs> On Magic Drain, well, this is why, I suppose. I will flip summon Magician of Faith. That's bad. Give me back the Graceful, baby! Here we go. <laughs> Let's draw some more cards. Of course. Woo! Oh my god, okay. Uh, to grave goes Sinister Serpent and Scapegoat, and to grave goes Bazoo the Soul Eater as well. Yep, there goes his 2,500 baboon ass. <laughs> that luscious, those luscious <laughs> cheeks <laughs> taken from us too soon. 2,200, I'm on my last leg here. Damn, I mean, let's find the uh, just desserts. Uh, I'll pass turn. I'll draw, and that is probably the worst possible draw in my deck. I will set a monster, and I will set a card face down. Go ahead. Alright, uh, I'll draw. Give me my boy back. And Sinister Serpent has 250 defense, so no real reason to risk a Torrential. I might as well just attack with the Magician of Faith. You know, Magician of Faith does excel in that department, having 400 defense. Woo! Let's and go, yeah, baby. that is the end of the game. I drew Delinquent Duo, so... <laughs> <laughs> Burn deck side into beatdown slash control. I was going to say, I don't think many burn decks are playing Jinzo, Joseph. Just saying. Whoa. But. <laughs> hey, whoa. I, I resent that. Uh, number one, uh, I didn't side into the uh, oh, beatdown cards. Correction. I had to play Gemini L. Correction. And secondly, Jinzo is so good. There. He's the most powerful burn monster of all. He burns at 2,400 <laughs> every turn. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I will be going first, and uh, we'll see if that holds true for a second time. I hope it's not the case unless it's on my end. Ugh. Good luck, buddy. I will draw, and uh, we're going to start off pretty good with a pot of greed. Can't really complain about that. I swear to God, every single game three we play, you open pot of greed. I don't know what it is. Have you found a pattern in the shuffler that I need to know about? You know, if you want to stop drawing painful choice as many times as you do, I'll stop drawing pot of greed and we'll call it even. How about that? <laughs> I'll make that trade every day, buddy. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I will... Uh, ugh, this is an interesting hand. I will set... And I will set one, two. Go ahead. That is interesting. Uh... Happy that there was no hand attack to follow that up. Yeah, unfortunate that I didn't get any, at least that you know Let's of, but I feel the, like uh, you could feel pretty good that I would have done that. The heavy storm here. All right, uh, this, I feel, forces my hand. I'm going to flip up Imperial Order. Mm. I don't blame you. It's a sick two for one. Mm. Do you have the MST? I don't know if I have anything, buddy. All right, I'm gonna... Jeez. Imperial Order is such a house! All right, I'm gonna set one card, Normal Summon Mystic Tomato, and proceed to the battle phase. That is fine. It's Magician of Faith! <laughs> That's fine. I figured it might be Magician, and that's fine with me, because if it gets you to get rid of the Imperial Order, I will consider that a victory. I'll set one card and pass turn. It's true. I mean, the fact that I do have to give up the Imperial Order here if I want to use it is uh, something to consider. I'm going to main one. Uh, or actually, excuse me. That, Standby phase. Yeah, let's uh, let's stop here. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Pot of greed, man. Two cards. You can't pass that up. It's so what if tempting. you draw a Harpy's Feather Duster? It's so tempting. It's so tempting. But at the same time, if all you did was like tomato 
set a couple pass. That's also kind of fine in my book too. <laughs> I don't know how much of the burn stuff you're still on. That's like what's a little bit confusing now. I'll pay for this turn. All right. We'll, we'll see how this goes. I will normal summon a copy of Mechanical Chaser. Sure. Let's go to battle phase, hit into the tomato. Uh, I will take 450. Correct. Gotta love those 50s. All right, I'm gonna go get me a, uh, I'm gonna get me a Mystic Tomato, I suppose. Okay, I'll go to main two. And I think, I'm trying to think how you out Mechanical Chaser without spells. I right. get Jinzo's away, I suppose. <laughs> Jinzo would be quite interesting on this board state. Yeah, I think I will go ahead and set a card face down and pass the turn. All right, I'll draw for turn. Show me the mm. Jinzo. Nope, <laughs> no Jinzo there. All right, I'll draw for turn. Standby okay. face comes around again, and we have that decision one more time of how we want to do this. It's so, so, so tempting. You could have your own Imperial Order, which would be a little bit tragic as well. I think I'm going to pay it. I'm going to pay it. Wow, summer. you are. You are living on the edge, buddy. I am just a little bit. So you've got tomato. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the battle phase. Let's just hit into Mystic Tomato again. To the grave he goes, and I'm gonna get the one, the only Witch of the Black Forest. Okay, so that tells me either you only have two tomato or the third one is in your hand. Either case, I'm kind of okay with that. I'll go to main two, I will set myself a card and I'll set myself another card and I'll pass the turn. I'll draw for turn. Okay, this is not going so hot. Uh, go ahead. All right, we're getting, uh, <laughs> this is getting a little bit weird now. You'd think for the beatdown deck, I'd be doing a little bit more beating down, but unfortunately, I just haven't been able to get there. You'd think for the burn deck, <laughs> I'd be burning. Standby phase, I mean, here we go again. Like, you're just setting and passing. I think I'm gonna pay it again. Wow, all right. Uh, this time I do have a monster, actually. It's Bazoo the Soul Eater. Oh, there he is. Uh, okay. I will flip up this copy of Sangin. Uh-huh. Go to battle phase. Sure. I'll send Bazoo into your Witch of the Black Forest. All right. Uh, I'm going to go get myself a Gemini Elf. Okay. I will send Chaser into what I presume to be a Tomato. It is actually a Magician Ooh. of Faith. Okay. Heavy Storm coming back. That's a bit frightening. And I'll attempt to get in for a thousand with Sangin. Yep. All right. Main two. I suppose I will pass the turn. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to normal summon Gemini Elf. That is fine. Mm. You have enough to crash with it with the bazoo already. Correct. If I attack into the chaser and you have limiter removal. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play or... limiter removal, Joseph? Come on. It's got to be like exactly mirror force. Imperial order is also up anyway, so you can just throw that out the window. All right. I'm going to I'm going to go for the mechanical chaser hit. Hmm. Chaser hits. Yeah, that's fine. So I will take 50 whole points of damage from that. Broken! I will set one card and you are good to go. This is such a calamity. I will draw, and again, we're in this position that is very precarious. I also know you added Heavy Storm back to your hand. Well, I mean, I've set four cards, so I think you are safe in terms of me activating I it. don't know. You could be a lunatic enough to uh, just go for it yourself. That's fair. That does describe me very well. I would say so. Sitting mm. on Pot of Greed for five turns, I just can't believe it. I mean, it's been keeping you at bay, to be fair, but I think I've actually done more to myself from Imperial Order payments than uh, actually actually hitting in directly, unfortunately. <laughs> it's also shutting down your scapegoats, which is nice. I'm gonna pay it. Wow, all right. I will activate the effect of Bazoo the Soul Eater. Yep. Just banish one. Okay. I will go to the battle phase. Okay. I will attempt to crash. That's fine with me. Okay, so both of our monsters die. I will attack for a thousand. Sure. I'll take a thousand. And I will activate Call of the Haunted, still in Ooh. battle phase. I'm gonna bring Shit. back, I wanna bring back Chaser. The zoo, you can hit over with another elf, but it can get to 19, which is pretty notable. Yeah, we'll get the bazoo. Uh, so Shit. we'll hit for 16. On summon, I'm gonna try to torrential. Fair enough. So before that even happens, that will get destroyed, that gets destroyed. I will activate the effect of Sangin. Yep. And with Sangin, I Is will- Is the boy making it? <laughs> Are we finding the boy once again? It's tempting. It's very, very tempting. I will, however, I think this time around, grab a copy of Witch of the Black Forest. Sure. Main phase two, I will set a card. Go ahead. Uh, you're good to go. <laughs> that was a very quick end of the turn. I'll draw. Yeah, I'm just counting at this point. We're, we're getting there. Yeah, slowly but surely. And again, like, this is just such a weird position. Ugh. I, I think it's time to let this go. I think it's finally time. In the arms of 
of the angels. We'll fire off pot agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw your cards. Okay. Well, it's nice to know there's no Imperial Order on that end, at the very least. God, I wish. Can you imagine? That would have been, you would have been over the moon if you had that ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I suppose Scapegoat is in the immediate future here, so I shall normal summon a Witch of the Black Forest. That's fine. I will attempt to attack in, but I imagine goats are coming down. Nope, I'll take the 11. Okay, sounds good. I'll go to main two. I think I'll just pass. Go ahead. Sure. Oh, God. Damn, this is rough. God, you just have bazoo food for days. I'm going to set one. You're good to go. Interesting. Uh, On end phase, I'm going to MST the one you just set. Sure. So that is a torrential tribute. That's pretty good. I'll draw. Uh, standby phase, I don't have to worry about anything because order is gone. All right, so two torrentials down. That leaves in terms of trap cards that could interfere. Another mirror force, or excuse me, a mirror force, another torrential tribute is what I meant to say. Call the haunted, I guess, also. So is a card. Mm -hmm. I think I need to just get aggressive. I'll normal summon Bazoo. Okay. I will attempt to go to battle phase. Right, we're going to try to scapegoat. I had a feeling. Sure. That's fine. All right. I will uh, attack two goats if you'll let me. No, not my goats. I will go to main two. And yep. I think I will set a card face down. And I will pass the turn to you. All right, I will draw for turn. So we're going to lead with a graceful charity. That is fine. I can't believe I got away with this, by the way. Sitting in my back row for 15 <laughs> turns here. Uh, yeah, probably a little late for scapegoat. Uh, don't like torrential either. It's nice to know those are gone. Let's try another one. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> mm. Now that's interesting. Ooh, that is very interesting. Oh... Now I have to do math. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, we're going to pitch Imperial Order Swords. Those are two good ones. Just desserts. Oh, that's not good. Yep, so I take a thousand, correct? Mm-hmm. Heavy. Ooh, that is also not good. So there goes the Dust Tornado, the Goats, and the Mirror Force. Oh my god, we hit the goats with two monsters on field. I'm the smartest man who ever <laughs> lived. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, change of heart, give me the bazoo. Yep, is this the end of the game? I certainly hope so. Reborn, give me the Gemini Jeez, elf. Jeez, look at that. And Snatch Steel, <laughs> give me the Witch of the Black Forest. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. God! You got it. Oh. You got it. I, I knew as soon as I summoned that bazoo, I'm like, man, this is going to get rough, but that is going to be uh, 25 from bazoo. 19. Oh. You didn't even need the witch. <laughs> this was already enough just between the two. <laughs> I'd like to thank Just Desserts for doing fuck all this entire game. <laughs> I'm like, when Alex fires Scapegoat, it's going to be crazy. And then... <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's just one of those things where... My hand was nuts, by the way. I had Regeki oh, premature change of heart and an MST in hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I considered, like, keeping the Imperial Order because I was like, if he's got a judgment set, I think Order just wins. But, you know, I actually, a lot has to go right there. I actually cited out the judgments uh, after game one that I knew that you were on burn. I figured. Yeah, just because it's it's so difficult, especially when, even in game two, when I saw that you were playing like a more, you know, once I saw more of the actual parts of your deck that were, you know, the Gemini Elves, the Tomato, I saw Tomato in the first game, but you know what I mean. It's really hard to keep a card like that in when 4,000 life points can go just like that. Like you said, just desserts a scapegoat. Like, it's it's scary. It's, it's really, really bad. And uh, I was thinking, I'm like, I know he has heavy storm and i just didn't think you were going to have you know graceful into graceful into a way to otk me so i thought yeah i mean yeah that's it's, ridiculous. it is ridiculous but that can happen and even with graceful oh. charity being semi-limited these crazy types of scenarios are still gonna go down but uh i'm glad that we got to showcase that but just look at how much gas we had in our hands like for both of, or the last yeah. two cards you had uh they're dark hole and sand game. right exactly so like even those are like all good <laughs> yeah uh, this this list is so strange because it is almost a control list that is just playing like a combo finish with scapegoat and cannon soldier, mm -hmm. but it's so cheesy. It's so adorable. Yeah. Like it, it sounds so cool on paper to be like, and then the tool that I use to defensively flex on my opponent turns into 2000 direct damage in practice. It's almost always better to just wait 
play Just Desserts as a Just Desserts and, like, hope that it's enough. Well, it's actually 2,500 because, you know, Cannon Soldier can tribute itself, too. So right. it's a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you attack with Cannon Soldier and then do that, that's 3,900, I suppose. That's, like, fine, I guess. And realistically, I was, like, probably the only matchup in which I'm able to actually beat Simo is if he rolls beatdown because that's the only scenario in which he'll be making trades or attacking or taking life to uh, do stuff like Imperial order if you were on a control deck you could just sit behind any number of cards and just wait yeah and like i would have nothing to do about it it's really weird just because of the way that even though this this division of the decks right the control the beat down the burn i guess if you want to call this burn uh how there yeah, actually is a little a stretch of the yeah term. very very loosely used it's there actually is a little bit of a triangle to a degree to these types of you know pseudo archetypes and obviously when you get into more fleshed out archetypes that are actually like namesake that we're going to see much later on, then that's going to definitely be the case and you're going to be able to tell very well. But even back then, I think it's very interesting to see how that sort of played out. And uh, wow, Imperial Order is such a house. Like that card is insane. <laughs> Still a card. I was wondering, I was like, what on earth could Alex have that like, it's ever a consideration if you keep it or lose it? Like obviously Pod is insane, right? But like, you would never, ever, ever want to let Imperial Order go when I clearly am on, like, goats and stuff. But this hand, right? Geki, Premature, Change of Heart, MST. I mean, that's the answer. Right. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and I could Passing that up for 15 turns, I mean, you can't expect anyone to do And that. I couldn't draw a monster to save my life. Like, I'm playing, I think, right. 17 in this list. So I actually have, God. like, a fairly decent amount of beaters. It's, like, three Bazoo, three Goblin Attack Force, three Chaser, three Gemini Elf, and then, you know, some of the smaller ones, like Faith, Witch, uh, Serpent, and the like. Like, but I just, I just for the life of me could not get anything going. And while yes, all the cards in my hand were broken, like far and away crazy. Regeki doesn't do a whole lot against you. Premature Burial, I didn't have monsters to do anything with for the first three turns of Imperial Order. Change of Heart came later, which again, you have no monsters, so I couldn't really steal anything. And so it's, it was, I was just playing the waiting game with Imperial because I figure your deck's equally as broken as mine with all of these spell cards, which you can look at the Pretty graveyard much. here and see what you had. So it bought me time to actually get some cards going. And I think once I actually got into one of these bazoos was when I just, just decided to let it go. Cause then the pot of greed might get me to some more cards and then we can start making something happen. But that's where actually the uh, solemn judgments and the magic drains came in. This list, I I thought was really mm -hmm. interesting because you actually have six ways to negate scapegoat and so yeah. by having a card that can do that but also just subsequently take out all the rest of your power spells in addition i think that was really neat because it actually makes it so that you're going to be caught off guard because you think oh he's just summoning bazoo or goblin attack force or gemini elf i've got four goats to protect me you have no native answer to judgment or drain unless you're playing judgment yourself and so if that can connect and i get two or three monsters on the board you think you're safe behind scapegoat all of a sudden i'm getting in for 5k damage i really like the approach that this world's list took and so uh, that's why i decided to give it a shot i like magic drain in this list specifically because like yes there are a lot of spells in our decks but like trading a scapegoat for like a pot of greed in hand or something you'll take that every day yeah there's not a single spell that you don't want to have in your hand right so like even if you fail to negate the scapegoat you're getting an unbelievably powerful spell uh, in response i think the only um, this was this was my first time playing with harpy's feather duster uh by the way that this card is insane yeah i was really worried too that like you had heavy storm and what was going to happen was if i like let the order go you were going to like heavy and then like feather duster me at the same time thinking i was going to like negate heavy or something like that i was worried that that could happen because there is a universe where it might but going back to magic drain quickly i think what's interesting is when you think about the hand destruction cards duo confi and forceful actually are pretty decent fodder mid to late game to pitch for a late game magic drain because most of the oh, time your point. resources are going to be so depleted and you even see with like painful choice as we demonstrated in several episodes prior most of the time you don't want to see those cards after like turn one or two because the game has developed so far that they're actually dead you saw in the second game of this I drew into duo and couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, no, I actually boarded out of duo uh, 
uh, Confis and um, the Forceful Sentry when I was going second, because I was like, by the time I get a chance to fire these, it'll be set up. I mean, it's aggro. You'll set a couple of Solemn Judgments and call it a day. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Next time, we are going to be experiencing Legacy of Darkness. A lot of really good cards coming around. We have the introduction of Spirit Monsters, so I believe Asura Priest is coming out to help deal with some of these scapegoats. We've got stuff like Exiled Force, Aeronite Parshath, Spear Dragon. I mean, talk about just taking 19 to the dome in case of Scapegoat as well. I mean, there are so many incredibly good cards that start to really flesh out some of these other archetypes like Warrior Toolbox, like Hand Control, even the dreaded Yadagarasu. Joseph, how are you going to feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yadagarasu, I still don't think is very good. Um, I've played a lot with the card in GOAT format, and while it is strong and obviously you play it, the reason it was banned is because it creates unfun game states. I'm excited to see if it's actually super strong and locks people out of the game, or if it's mostly hype and resolves games that are already done anyway. There's a card I'm super excited about as well, but you guys will just have to tune in next time to see what that is. But guys, thank you so much mm. for watching the video. We do have to shout out our patrons at the end of every episode, like we always do. So big shout outs to... Gray Lane, Pony Stark, Joshua Wiley, Tim 00x3, Michael Dente, Mystic Walk. We have Oli, we have Sylvia Wilds, GW, Jarvis Martin, Part 2, The Astro Wolf 13, G Man 99, Dan the Man Hobin, Logan Thomas, Matthew Fahrenbacher, Dragon Lord, Dolly Wop, Synchro Guy, Peter Gregory, and Gioko. We have Thomas Nelson, Emil Cohen, Draconics, Showtagonist, Stephen Chapa, Leah Roche, Alex Smith, Jordan Coons, and Jesse Wood. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll be adoring the Shirt of Shame next time. And we'll see you in Legacy of Darkness.